G'day, 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 and yes, the video is paused. <laughs> I've been asked a few questions about dead space and the water amounts and things in the Grandfather G40, so I'm going to give you a quick look. So what I did originally is I weighed two litres of water, or two kilo of water, on the scales. It's the most accurate way I've always tested my equipment. Now I poured a little bit in the middle just to fill up the dead space the real dead space of the pump sort of dead space. There, we fall down to there. You can see there, it was about 192 grams, which is about 200 mil. We'll just call it 200 mil to round it off. And people wanted to know the dead space underneath the bottom of the mash tun. And when measuring this, I didn't go right up over the bottom screen of the mash pipe, but mine measured at about 6.2 litres. Now, later on, when I looked at the program, they measured theirs at 6.9. And the difference there is what 700 mil and in that whole machine is only a few millimeters so you know they might have measured it just over the bottom screen I then weighed out in 10 litre batches or 10 kilo batches of water for those overseas 10 kilo is 10 litre and you can see there I had the 200 mil still there but with 10 litres in I only come up to the 9 litre mark and it's funny that because in my other system, uh, it was the Bruzilla 65. It was the opposite. 10 litres would be 11 litres. And so I kept putting in 10 litres. And besides that one, which looks like a little bit more went in, it was all very even. So it wasn't my measurements. It went up, you know, 10 litres, 10 litres, 10 litres, 10 litres. was very even. If it had been like 9 litres from the start and then 9 litres and 9 litres, it would have been going out by a litre each time and it would have been very different. So uh, for some reason, my sight glass is about a litre out, but that's fine. As long as you know that, all is good. 39. So it's not my water amounts. Otherwise, it'd be all over the shop. So eventually, I filled it up, and that is 50 litres. 50 litres right there. Right to that ring that holds the mash pipe. You can see there, we're way over the top of the, the full mark, the 46 litre mark. And that's 50 litres. So it probably holds 55, even more than 55. I didn't fill it any further, because I didn't think I had the need to. You wouldn't boil more than that, that's what I'm saying. And it was enough to clean, because what I was doing after this was cleaning it. So the 50 litres was just enough, it covered the whole mash pipe. All I have to do is heat some water and put some cleaner in it. So I think those measurements are just handy to know. It was about 200 mil up to the little outlet of the pump there. And I measured 6.2 litres mash tonne dead space. But of course, as I said, they might have measured right up over the top, just over the top of that bottom of that mash pipe for their 6.9 litres. And you can see there that you could possibly boil 50 litres. Now this is a big standout feature and it's a, more or less a new naming convention because most other systems, when they say a 35 litre, that is right to the top and you can't boil 35 litres. You can usually only boil about 30 litres. And that's the same with most other systems, the Gutens, the Bruzillas, the Robo Brews. This, even the old grandfathers, but this system is called G40, and you can get, or should be able to get, 40 litres out. There should be no problem of filling up with wort to that 46 litre mark and boiling, and you won't boil off six litres in an hour, so you should be able to get 40 litres out. I think it's a more accurate way of naming and measuring the unit. So we're at 70 degrees which is a strike temp for me, and it's 6.37, so that's an hour and a half. It did click off when I first started. I had it in a power board, and it drew too much power through the power board. I had a few other things going on the power board as well, which is a little bit silly, but it's just the setup I have now. So that's right, that's the same as what I'd get on my old 3V system, about an hour and a half to get up the strike temp from cold water. That was like 14 degrees when we started. Apologise for the light, it's getting a bit dark in here. 
So I've moved on to the cleaning and I don't just use sodium bicarbonate for this, I do use the PBW Clone Stella Clean and that's because there might be oils. Sodium bicarbonate is perfect for eating away organic matter but you really need that little bit of soap to get rid of oils. If you don't have PBW just mix a little bit of household soap in with your sodium bicarbonate and that'll be enough to dissolve the oil. Uh, I'm going to put the pump on of course to circulate it a bit. The bubbles could seize the pump up if there's too much bubbles down the bottom where the pump is. I haven't used this system before so I'm not quite sure. Some systems if the bubbles are right near where the pump is and it starts pulling in the bubbles then it's going to block the pump. But we might be alright here and we're not going to boil so we're not going to be pulling in um, bubbles from the boil. We're going to keep it below boil. I'll turn the pump on. I'll just let that go for about half an hour. Should be plenty. And uh, since it's late at night here, I'll probably leave that in there overnight anyway, but I won't leave the pump on or the heating on. And we'll rinse it out in the morning. What is good and I'm happy to see is a nice strong whirlpool, even with 50 litres in it. Uh, normally when you're brewing beer, you probably wouldn't have it this full. But uh, it is leaking from the side here, from this joint. Okay, that'll do for today. We'll have a look tomorrow. We'll give it a rinse. You wouldn't have to leave it overnight. It's just that it's late at night here. So I'll rinse it in the morning with the hose. So I've come out after it's been sitting there all night. I've turned the pump on just to make sure if anything was sitting there and, you know, a gunk or whatever from the clean in the pump, just to make sure everything's recirculating again. And then after a little while, I'm just going to empty it into the cube here. I would do it outside, but for me, this is easier. Well, this is happening, I'm getting a rub. You don't want to run the pump dry. And we'll just take this out. We'll have a closer look. Can I pull that up through there? No, I can. I don't have to take that out. There's about that much left, which is just over probably 200 mil left in the whole machine at the moment. That will be in the lines in the pump. I don't think it's going to let me take out. No, the pump doesn't want to work and you shouldn't run it dry, even though it's not dry, it's not it's not working there, it sounds like it's dry. Now there's a, a few different ways you can clean this. You can bring a hose in and hose it down. So you're washing all this stuff down and out through the top here. Through the via the pump. And you just rinse it a few times until you're pretty sure it's clean and it's been rinsed out properly. The other way is there is a bolt there. You could attach a tap or something to there. We'll have a look at that in a minute, I reckon. So while I'm hosing it out, I turn the pump on. And so you can see how this goes. You can just keep hosing and rinsing as much as you like, as long as you've got enough water over that outlet there. What I have found is that it is quite a strong pump and it can cause a whirlpool. So you've got to have a fair bit of water in there because if it gets a whirlpool happening, then you're going to get an air bubble in there and you might seize the pump up. And as I mentioned earlier, you can take the little plug bolt out of the bottom of the sight glass with a G70 had a tap there but it often got in the way I've heard people say and for me because I move it around a lot 
it'd actually be a little bit dangerous to the unit. And I mean dangerous as in, as in I could catch it on something and break it off. But, you know, if you're going to have it installed somewhere and not move it much, yep, you could add a tap-in or you get any sort of fitting you can want there. You know, I found just a barb fitting. I can put a little bit of hose on there and I can put one of my little hose clamps on there if I want to stop it or start it. And that'll do the job just fine, just for cleaning or emptying in the shed. Now you can use gravity to do it, just like that. Or if you close off the top valve there, you can actually use the pump. So as long as there's enough water in there to use the pump, that'll of course stop it pumping out the recirc tube and force it out through the bottom. And you can see what I'm doing here. As it's getting lower and causing that vortex, it'll start sucking air into the pump and seize it. So I'm just breaking up that vortex with my fingers just so I can empty it right out. First time I used it, I didn't worry about cleaning the chiller and I'd sort of forgot because I was doing a no chill anyway. So after that first brew, I thought oh, I'd better clean the chiller. And it's the same process, heat up some water, put some cleaner in it and pump it through the chiller. Now this was just sodium bicarbonate I was using this time. And as I mentioned before, sodium bicarbonate isn't much good with oil, but it's a great cleaner. And every time you see a household cleaner like a laundry detergent or a household spray and it says OxyClean, that's what sodium bicarbonate is. And it produces those bubbles when it's cleaning. And this is a great example of what I was talking about earlier. This was fine, this unit. I had used it for a brew in between these cleans. But even though everything looked clean, things seem to settle in the pump. And when you put cleaner in it and that OxyClean starts working, it causes bubbles. Bubbles in your pump will seize your pump. And when I say seize your pump, usually with a magnetic drive, it is temporary, but it's still not something you want to do all the time. So you put your cleaner in and you just wait till all those bubbles are gone. Sodium bicarbonate is probably an active cleaner for around six or seven hours. So it doesn't matter if you have to leave it half an hour before you turn your pump on. You just wait for those initial bubbles to go. Then you can turn your pump on without worry. We're at temperature now, so it's not heating. It's just cleaning. There must have been a little bit in the uh, crevice that I didn't wipe out. And the sodium bicarbonate was into it. See, so it's gone now. Must have eaten it all. There's a few bubbles coming out. And there's a few bubbles coming out the pump still. bubbles in there So as I said, don't play with it like I am. Come back, come back in 10 minutes or so. Get the initial bub bubbles out, let it water soak in, and then come back and turn your pump on again. And when you get used to it, you can often hear when a pump's pulling bubbles through, like you notice, know, turn it off. Aha. I think... We might have cleared the bubbles, but we're about to start whirlpooling again. Turn it down. Turn it off for a sec. Now oh, there's still some bubbles coming up. Mm. 
All right, we seem to be working now. That looks like a full flow. There's not really... Many bubbles coming out. There's always going to be the odd one. I didn't clean the chiller on the initial clean. So I'll hook that up and clean it now. I'll make sure... This is the beer side, which is silicon. The red and the blue are for hot and cold water. Well, your cold water in and usually hot water that comes out of your chiller. So we'll turn the pump off. And we'll take this out. And we'll plug the chiller in. Like that. And we'll see how we go. That'll give the beer side of the chiller a good clean. Again, 15, 20 minutes, whatever. And until you get the hang of these things, I wouldn't walk away because if that starts a whirlpool again and, and like sucking air into the pump and you've walked away for half an hour and come back and it's had a dry pump for half an hour, that's uh, not really good. What people often get mixed up with is that would be hot beer going through there. And your hot water and hot water coming out the same side. See, some people think, oh put the cold in where the hot is, but it's not the way it works. Because they're going against each other. So the hot wort comes in this side and the cold water goes in the bottom and comes out the same side. So you can just got to sort of remember hot and hot. Hot water is going to be coming out of there and hot wort's going to go into there. It's pretty easy on this machine because you know you've got the red and you've only got this connection on one end. But if you ever have to replace the hose or something, it's hot and hot. I just let this go for 15 or 20 minutes. Give it a rinse with clean water once it's done. Here we are after a brew. Of course you pull out your hop filter. I've already dumped most of that matter into the garden. Then all it takes is a quick hose. I'll speed up this video. To be honest, a lot of the times in my system, I don't go too crazy cleaning. It is a boil pot. It's not a fermenter, it's a boil pot. You're gonna boil things. Yes, of course you wanna get rid of all the crud, but really all it takes is a wipe. If you feel the need, you can give it a good clean every few brews with some chemicals or some soaps or whatever you wanna use. And we might look at the next bit in fast forward as well because it's the same principle as I cleaned it originally. It's just a bit more dirty. So yet again, another supposedly short video <laughs> ended up being a long video. But I think it's really worth showing everything. I've heard a lot of people say it's a very easy unit to clean. I don't find it much easier than other units, but there's a bit of a difference here. This unit is very heavy, and while yes, I can turn it upside down, I don't feel as comfortable turning it upside down and throwing it around the front yard like I do with my other units. The instructions say not to use a pressure washer. Now, I often use one on my other units without worry, and I often just tip my other units upside down to drain. 
This is a much heavier, bulkier, more expensive unit. I don't feel like throwing around like that. So it is handy having that bottom drain. And for people that, again, leave it in the one place and don't carry it around much, I can see it being quite handy. And if you're fussy, there you go. I use some Barkeeper's Friend on the bottom to make it nice and shiny. If you're wondering where you get that, you can just get it at Woolies. It's usually hidden on the bottom shelf though, because they want you to buy their products. A little bit goes a long way. Thanks for watching. Thanks for lasting this long if you did. Like, subscribe, share, and all that sort of thing. There'll be a few more Grainfather videos coming up, and of course, a lot of videos and other things big thank you to my patrons because without them these videos couldn't continue and a big thank you to Grainfather. This is not a paid review at all. I don't own a home brew shop. I don't own shares in a home brew shop. Completely independent so far. I've never done paid reviews, scripted reviews or paid product placement. All cleaned with about not even two thirds of a five gallon bucket or 19 litre bucket. That's not bad. Not bad at all. Cheers.